Hello, my fellow Limitless HBICs. How are you doing on this lovely morning, afternoon, or evening? How are you all? Let's address the obvious. My voice is still not 100%, but the rest of me is, and that's all I care about, okay? That's all I care about. Um, it's getting better, day by day, it's getting better. Um, you know the deal, selling myself time. If you need help, figure ring out what's going on between you and your manifestation, why it's not here yet. Or maybe you just need a consistent virtual slap in the head. Go ahead and email me at manifestingwithkimberly at gmail.com. That is the only place to get a hold of me for coaching. I do not DM on Instagram. I do not contact you through TikTok. So if anybody is looking like this and is trying to offer services or readings through TikTok fucking comment sections, TikTok mail, Instagram comment sections, Instagram DMs, they are not me. I only go through manifesting with Kimberly at gmail.com. That's it. No other symbols, no other nothing. Manifesting with Kimberly at gmail.com. Okay? Whatever I offer for coaching is in the Dropbox below. It's also in the screens that just went by that you just watched, hopefully. Okay? All that info is here. When you do reach out to me, I will eventually send you an email listing everything I offer as well. Uh, the specialty in what I offer is video calls. Video calls. I don't, I don't do email coaching. There is one package I offer of purchasing a call with follow-up emails, but that's it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I have a channel membership. Uh, I go live with them every single Tuesday. That's also in the Dropbox below. If you are a channel member, I do offer now 20% off any coaching services for my channel members. Let's see, let's see. I also have Instagram, TikTok. I go live on all three, meaning three, meaning YouTube. I go live on Wednesdays on YouTube. I go live on most of Thursdays on TikTok. I didn't last week because of not feeling good. And I am in catch up mode because I shut everything down this past weekend. I did not address emails. I did not do anything. I just rested. So I'm catching up, okay? Let's see, let's get to it, all right? That's enough selling myself. I actually had somebody ask me, why are your intros so long? Because it's my channel, it's my channel. And because you have the ability to fast forward through it. Did you know that? That you can boop, 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 boop. Skip right there, you don't even have to watch it. Did you know that? Oh, shocking. Anyway. <laughs> Sassy Kim is always here. Yes, and she's back full throttle. She is, Sassy's back. As you can see by our title today, we are addressing boundaries, boundaries. Why, why boundaries? Because I had uh, a couple of things actually pop up last week within my 3D, not necessarily my situations, but A, with someone else, and with a client of mine, and this client is near and dear to my heart. Obviously, we'll keep them anonymous, but they had a situation in their life, and um, it bears speaking about. When it comes to manifesting, I think I have made it very clear on my channel. If you've ever watched any of my live streams, you already know my opinion on, I am not the type of person that will hold back a moment, hold back a reaction if someone is what I feel is disrespecting me. Um, if I feel it, I do snap. Is that always the best way to handle things? No. When we're manifesting, should we always be reacting to our 3D? No. But I own it on my channel. I don't fucking care. If someone is showing up being disrespectful in any way, shape, or form to me, I don't care about everyone as you pushed out. I don't care that I'm the one manifesting it. I will snap, crackle, pop a bitch if I need to. That's my personality. I am unwilling to change it. That being said, it's also because I know with, you know, revision later, we'll just clean it up with the revision, right? Big deal. But if someone's being disrespectful and it's someone you are currently manifesting, like a specific person, a lover, we do not have to be lapdogs 
to our specific person. If the person that we're trying to manifest is showing up in a way, let alone in a, an abusive way, I'm gonna just say right from the jump, if you are experiencing abuse in any way, shape or form, emotional, physical, sexual, the only answer in this moment is to remove yourself from that situation. Not stay, not continue manifesting the person, leave. I am not a coach that's going to judge you for what you want to manifest. If your deepest desire is to still manifest that person, I'm not going to judge you. I'm just going to tell you now is not the time. The time now is to get yourself out of that situation, period, and work solely on you. Your healing from said abuse is your priority. Getting yourself safe is your priority. Manifesting can come later. We might be always act, you know, actually or actively manifesting. That is not here or there when it comes to abuse of any kind, okay? I need to say that right from the jump. You've got to get yourself out of that situation or reach out to someone who can help get you out, okay? My advice, turn off YouTube, please, and contact authorities, okay? Now, when it comes to accepting breadcrumbs or anything else that is not what we want in our scenarios, we have the right to set a boundary of what we are accepting from anyone in our 3D. Anyone. We are often taught in manifesting that, you know, don't worry about taking action in the 3D do all the work up here, blah, blah, blah. I get that. I get that. But we have the human God-given right to not tolerate things we don't like. And if we are receiving breadcrumbs from our person, and we are aware they are breadcrumbs, they're not texting, they're not calling, they're not showing up the way we prefer, they're only offering you friends with benefits, you have the ability to say no. No, that is not something I'm willing to accept. I'm going to continue manifesting you up here. We don't need to tell them that, but that's the idea. We don't have to tolerate what we don't like. We don't have to accept bad behavior from anyone. One thing that does concern me, and this goes into abusive situations, is when someone is in an abusive situation, the, in my opinion, the wasting of time trying to figure out, well, how did I manifest this? How did I manifest this abuse? I don't think we need to blame ourselves for abuse of any kind. I don't think we need to do that. We also don't want to use manifestation or the law of assumption as the excuse to continue tolerating abuse, okay? Sorry, I got sidelined with that. I just wanted to make sure I got that in here. Abuse in itself, no matter what, the answer is to get yourself out and get yourself into a healthy state, period. Okay, all right. I wanted to make sure I said all that before I, I went back to specific person talk. So, <clears throat> it is our beliefs and assumptions. It is the state we are holding that we manifest from. I've been talking about states for a while on this channel because that is essentially where we are manifesting from, our state. Each state we hold has its own beliefs and assumptions. That is why I call the state where we're getting everything we want. Our self-concept is amazing, meaning people are reflecting it back to us. So we're aware of how fucking dog we are, how fucking dog that we are. But you are able to identify the state you're in, okay? And if you're consistently falling back into a victimhood 
state. You know by how you feel, what your thoughts are, how you're relating to people within your 3D, how they're reflecting back to you, what state you're maintaining. If you are being triggered every single time, your person is not showing up doing the things we desire. You are not in the state of the woman or man who has it all state. That's what I call it on my channel. The woman or man who has it all, all our desires. You are reflecting out, right, in a victim mindset. They're doing this to me. I cannot be happy until they show up differently. We don't want to maintain victim state. We don't want to maintain states that keep us trapped in old thought patterns, old programming. We actively learn how to embody the state of the woman or man who has it all through affirmations, visualizations, scripting, whatever your personal manifestation game is. The reason why we identify, okay, what is going on in our life? What is going on in our scenarios? What am I seeing in my relationships? If you know that in every one of your relationships, people are showing up not being respectful of you. We don't want to permanently stay in the mindset of pointing fingers at them. And the reason why I say that is, although I don't, listen, I don't blame you for being sick of their shit. That's not what I'm saying. But at the same time, if we want the change, we want them to change. We have to change. Our self-concept that is what they are reflecting, needs to change. And I don't say that from a, you're a mess, you're broken. You know that's not what we do on my channel. But we identify what are the behaviors that I've been accepting from these other people. If you know you've actively accepted breadcrumbs, friends with benefits, things that you are not actively trying to manifest, if you've been accepting it by staying triggered, staying triggered, I'm not telling you you can't have your emotional moment. I'm saying when you choose to stay triggered day after day after day, you cannot be shocked when that person is not reflecting any type of change. Your person is evolving with you. They are growing, changing, conforming with you. You. So if you're actively, consistently maintaining a state that is anything but the woman or man who has it all, that is what people are going to reflect back to you. This isn't the place to be blaming yourself, being beating yourself up, being hard on yourself. This is the place where we take our power back. Okay, specific person has been showing up, not texting me when I want, not calling me when I want, not making me a priority, not doing the things that I desire. It does not make me feel good. I am allowing this to ruin my entire day. I am allowing this to nearly have me cease to function. I am allowing this to make me want to stay in bed all day. That is you accepting and allowing their shit behavior. This is where boundaries come in. Boundaries. Meaning, you can still manifest your person and get them to reflect to you, conform, become the version that you desire. We have that ability in the law of assumption to do that. But you have to be 
actively willing to change yourself in order to get them to reflect it back to you. Are you hearing me? That is why I bring up state. It may not be easy for you to go from the feeling like shit state to the feeling of the woman or man who has it all state. It might be hard for you to jump to this, this while you've been spending your dominant amount of time over here. I get that. That is why we take our baby steps getting you there. That is why we actively address what we're seeing in our 3D. We address that through our affirmations, through scripting, through visualizing, through inner conversations. We are addressing it that way. We stay on our manifestation game to help get us to this point. You know what the woman or man has it all state feels like. The moments that you're feeling on top of the world, the moments you see a glimpse of your person reflecting what you want, maybe it's the first time you've manifested and you see it showing up in your 3D and you know it was you that did it, that elating, happy, content, I'm the shit feeling is the woman or man who has it all state. It is, it's a glimpse of it. So you've been there. Once you are actively working on yourself through affirmations, visualization, scripting, manifestation game. We're just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm sick of saying affirmations, let's just call it manifestation game, okay? When you are actively working on yourself through your manifestation game, sorry, um, you are working on those baby steps. So every time you work on your manifestation game, and you will notice, let me just say this as a side note, you will notice that if you've been working on a specific affirmation within your self-concept, you will get to the point where you don't feel called to affirm that anymore. And that's awesome. That means you've fulfilled your baby step. You've evolved. It's not a feeling of negativity. It's not a feeling of dread. You actively can easily embody that feeling. Meaning, if you've been working on knowing that you're worthy and deserve all of your desires, if that's something you've been actively manifestation gaming, and you're starting to identify things in your 3D, like, wait a minute. I don't think I deserve that type of treatment anymore. I don't think that that's something I want to experience. It really doesn't feel good. It feels yucky, even though it's something you've been tolerating forever. But it feels really yucky right now. That is because you've evolved. You have shifted. You've been working on yourself. And so you know what it feels like to feel good. So when those shit things are showing up in your reality, it feels yuckier than normal to you. It's because you've been doing the work, you've evolved. And now those yucky things that you've been so used to, you're dull to it, it didn't jar you before. They're jarring you now because you realize you are worth better fucking treatment. And that is when we start putting our boundaries down. I don't mean you need to run up to every fucking person in your reality, letting them know how you're not going to accept their bad behavior anymore. It's not what I'm saying. But I will say, there are some people who will have a journey of where maybe stepping up or putting your foot down to someone might be a part of your journey. It just might be. It's not for me to say that it'll never happen. You'll know because you won't think about it. It's just going to flow right out of your mouth. And you'll look back and realize that was inspired action. But that's not for me to call out for you. That is something that you will handle in your own 3D. But this is why I think that when people are on this journey, when they've been doing the honest work on themselves to start reflecting that out in their 3D, that when a situation that you've probably dealt with before but is showing up now 
is really uncomfortable, that is because you are evolving. You're evolving and you're realizing that that behavior is no longer fucking acceptable to you. You're allowed to set your fucking boundary and set that boundary. It doesn't mean you have to cut people off in your 3D, cut contact. I'm not saying that. I'm saying recognize that when you do the work, that you're going to want to tolerate certain behaviors less and less. And that's not a bad thing. You're allowed to set that boundary. You should be setting boundaries. You don't have to be a lap dog because you are utilizing the law of assumption and now you're aware of it, so you're consciously creating. Set the boundary. For some people, setting the boundary might be, I am no longer going to engage with that person while they are showing up in a way I don't prefer. And you have that right to do that. Setting the boundary might be actively telling that person, I really don't like how you talk to me right now. I don't like this. I don't deserve it. And when you're ready to speak to, speak to me re respectfully, we will talk. But until then, I'm not going to engage with this. You have that right. Or the choice is to just go up here. There are your own options is what I'm saying. What feels comfortable to you? Editing Kim here. Just really wanted to quick, quickly to say that in regards to what happened with one of my very near and dear to my heart client friends is I just want to say this. Sometimes our specific person may or may not be a family member or even a friend in our reality. Or it is a specific person. I'm saying specific person can be anybody, right? You also reserve the right to not want to work on the relationship with that person. You have the right to completely remove them from your life. That's an option you may choose. Don't fall prey to this healing work mindset that comes into the law of assumption and law of attraction world sometimes. You are not obligated to rekindle or continue relationships with anyone you don't want to. You have that right to say, no, I don't want to continue having this relationship, even if it's a mother-daughter relationship. If you've been treated wrong, abused, anything by a specific person, and specific person meaning could be anybody, you also have that option to say, I no longer want you in my life. And that's okay. And you're not wrong for wanting that. And for anyone to make you feel differently, they are wrong. The only thing I do suggest, if that is your scenario and you are desiring to cut them from your life, I do think it's a good thing for you to at minimum work on maybe the anger, hurt, resentment feelings you're holding to that person. Not because I feel you must forgive. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying hanging on to those types of feelings and emotions can be more detrimental to us. Meaning when we hang on to anger and resentment towards another, it's hurting us, not them. So I'm just saying address those types of feelings and emotions you don't have to rekindle that relationship. You don't even have to forgive them if you don't want to. But you can work on yourself to say, no, I deserve this type of treatment from all people in my reality. And I'm going to affirm that I'm always treated with love and respect and that everyone respects my boundaries. Work on that. But don't hang on to the pain and anger. Let's work around that. But you don't have to have that person in your life if you don't want to. Okay, editing Kim done. I'm not trying to send you all out into your 3D to start fighting with people. That's not what we're doing here. But you also have the right to no longer accept things you don't want. I just really want to make that clear. I know that there are some of you out there who are actively accepting 
breadcrumbs from your person. And by breadcrumbs, I'm saying you're staying in a friends with benefits situation when after every time you sleep with your person, you feel yucky afterwards. I would stop doing that. It's your fear that you think that if you choose to no longer do that, that you're going to lose them. You're not going to lose them. If you're manifesting them, honey, you're not going to lose them. They are not going to forget you. They might give a shit reaction because you've said, you know, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to come over tonight. They might not be happy with that shit. But as you continue working on yourself, they're only going to start reflecting that anyway. But your specific person is not going to forget you. They're not going to fucking leave. They might do something in the 3D that activates your fear of them leaving. And I understand that. And that is scary. I get it. But I'm telling you, if you're actively manifesting them and you're also working on you at the same fucking time and you're choosing to stay in the mindset, to actively try to embody the state of, I don't have to tolerate anything I don't like. Mindset, they're only going to conform with you. It might be on a time lag, but they are. If you're affirming, visualizing, doing anything manifestation game about that person, you are on their fucking mind. You are on their mind every time you do anything manifesting game-wise that includes them. Even if you're someone who's no longer affirming for that person and you're only working on your self-concept, you know as well as I do, that person pops up into your motherfucking mind at some point. Your subconscious is your God thinking power, your God computer, your God state. It's actively working on your manifestation for you while you work on yourself. So no matter what route you take, your subconscious knows what you want. I think it's a really big mistake on coaches to make people feel that their subconscious is going to get overwhelmed if you have too many affirmations, if you don't say your person's name while you're manifesting, if you just go all self-concept. It's all silliness. Your subconscious is manifesting and creating every single thing in your reality. It, it, it knows what you want. And if you have just a little bit of faith and trust in your subconscious, it's all that matters. It's your thoughts around the belief and assumption that matters. Okay? But I just really want this video to be the reminder that if we are experiencing behaviors we do not like from someone in our reality, just because we are in the law of assumption, because we are consciously creating, doesn't mean we have to tolerate other people's bullshit. We have the right to set a boundary. That is something even I have to actively work on within my own 3D. I have, and I own it, and you guys, I'm sure see it in me. I have a problem of shutting things down. Meaning, on the Wednesday Night Lives, on my channel membership, I have a habit of letting, because of my kindness and because of my heart wants to save everyone, I will stay on for hours and I will try to help and answer things for hours instead of setting a boundary of, okay, this is my time limit for my own health. Even I have to work on setting boundaries. My goal is to help every single person I can, I can intermingle with. It really is. And even I need to set that boundary. So what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter where you are in your manifestation game. Sometimes there's still a little bit of tweaking we might need. It doesn't mean we're bags of shit right now, though. You know, I don't like that. We are not bags of shit. We're not going to fuck up our manifestations. We're not going to screw things up or we're going to lose our people because we're so imperfect. Fuck all of that. You know that's not true. It's not true. That's a limiting belief from a limiting motherfucking coach. We're not. We're amazing now, but sometimes a part of our journey 
is setting a boundary. But I do want to leave on this little nugget. For as much as I am here as that mom, auntie, big sis energy, bestie energy, and I want to protect you all. It also means that you don't get to go out into your 3D and mistreat others either. It doesn't mean you get to go out and mistreat everyone else either. Not that anybody is, that's not what I'm saying. But it, listen, it goes both ways. See what I'm saying? And not every single person that is saying no to you, not every single person that is setting their own boundaries is doing anything to hurt you. Not every single person is a bad egg that needs a label. And I do think we do get carried away with that sometimes. So it does go both ways, okay? We don't have the right to go out and mistreat others either, okay? Let's just make that clear. But on that note, another damn long video. Set your boundaries. And I know some of you are gonna ask, well, how do I do that? It might be different for all of you. Start with setting the boundary up here. Start here. And then decide how you should handle it in your 3D. Or maybe you don't even need to handle it in your 3D and it's just something you're doing up here. Start in your 4D first and then we'll work the other direction. But if it's an abusive situation, your answer is to get out right now or reach out to someone who can help get you out. That's the answer for any of you in an abusive scenario, okay? And on that note, I'll see you all in a day. Be good, get on your manifestation games, fuck that 3D, don't let that throw you off your game, okay? Because you know the rules. Get your mind right, get your thoughts right, and get your shit. What other little taglines we got? You can be doing have whatever you want. We're busy over here getting our shit, and you know that. Yes, we're limitless HBICs over here. There's nothing we can't have. The only person that can tell you no or put the limits on is you, only you. So remove those fucking limits. Stop listening to a thousand different people. Trust in your fucking self. Trust in your own power. Love you all. See you tomorrow.